So today we're going to get started with a new topic in CSS. And this is a very exciting one because we're going to start learning more about very advanced layout techniques. So in the past, we've learned about some pretty basic layouts. We've learned about floats and displays and the box model, but they're not really enough to create the best websites possible. To do that, we're going to need some extra advanced techniques, which is what we're going to be covering in the next three sections. In this first section, we're going to be looking at CSS Flexbox. Now, we're going to give a quick, or I'm going to give a quick introduction to it in this video. We're going to be talking a little bit about what it is, how it works, and how you can apply it and what you can do with it. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and get started with it. So first of all, what actually is Flexbox? So if you don't know already, Flexbox stands for Flexible Box. And similar to the box model, it's a concept in CSS uh, or a feature that allows you to create and arrange items or well elements very easily. So it's a great alternative to using something like the box model or floats or displays if you want to create very responsive websites or lay out your items in a way uh, that makes it look great. So this is an alternative to using those traditional techniques that were used in earlier versions of CSS. So the Flexbox or the main Flexbox is split into two different components. You have the container and the flex items. So the container is the parent element. It's what is going to become the container for all of the items. Now, usually what you would do is use this on a div or some other form of container element and then use some special properties, which we're going to be covering in the next video to create the flex container. But then the next part is the flex items. So this can be pretty much anything you want. Images, links, um, spans, whatever you want, you can add them as flex items. And this is what makes up the flex box. Now what you can do with these two components is actually uh, use different properties to manipulate them and create really nice layouts like this one that we have here. And that's what we're actually going to be covering in the next few videos is learning how to uh, manipulate the container as well as the items inside. So what can you actually do with Flexbox? Well, you know that you can create these nice responsive grids, but what would you actually use them for? Well, although it might not be apparent, pretty much all pages these days use some form of CSS layout, whether it be the box model or Flexbox or CSS grid, which we're going to be covering in the next section. There are so many ways that it can be used. Flexbox is mainly used to lay out a website or create different components. So for example, the top of the page is going to contain your sidebar. That's one flex item. And then you have the right side of your page, which takes up maybe 30% of the page. And that's your, uh, or yeah, so the top is your menu, for example. And then the side on the right is your sidebar. And you have the rest as content and you have little widgets everywhere. And you can start to see how this all connects together. You can create really good looking websites by creating one huge flex container and then creating a bunch of separate items, putting all of your different things in those items. So it's pretty much just a way to lay out your website. Now in the past, we've used floats to move images around and we've used also margin and padding to push things up and down, but that's not a really efficient way. It's more of a, a kind of hack to move things around and using something like Flexbox pretty much lets you do all of this naturally. All right, so there we go. That's a little introduction to Flexbox and how it works. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and go onto our machine and start creating some flex containers. All right, let's move on.